So almost done with this chapter. We're on lesson 3.6. I'm looking at algebra um, standard of community commutative property multiplication. You should not act like this is something you've never heard of because I've talked about it in the previous five lessons in this unit plus um, we've done commutative property of addition. If you remember commutative property of addition is where you can add numbers in any order and get the same answer such as 2 plus 3 is the same as 3 plus 2. So when you look at commutative property and you're going to have the similar concept. Our lesson objective today is to model the commutative property of multiplication and use it to find property to find products. Your central question, how can you use the commutative property of multiplication to find the product? So go ahead and set your journal page up for the day. Your central question. You can write it in there. Model your I can statement. If you want to leave this until the end, you can. Because that's what I put on that last page every day. And then you have your problem of the day, which we will move to next. So pause the video as you finish filling and setting up your lesson journal entry of the day. Problem of the day, Rosa made a picture graph to show how many hours a week she spent on different activities. This was her key. Each dot equals two hours. How many dots does the three, how many hours does three dots stand for? So you're gonna go two, four, and six. Looking at those keys, there's a reason we did those earlier in the year. Okay, you're going to start on your big math book, page 119. And with a story problem of unlock the problem, Dave works at the bird store. He arranges 15 boxes of bird seed in rows on the shelf. There are two ways he can arrange the box. What are the two ways he can arrange the boxes in equal rows? Okay. So they need to equal 15. So if you need to get out the square tiles, you can do that. Um, since it is the numbers 15, it ends in a 5, so you know that you can count by 5s. Looking at the activity, arrange 15 tiles in 5 equal rows. Okay. Draw a quick picture of your array. I'm going to do a little X's today. It's easier for me. So I have five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen. So how many tiles are in each row? You have five rows. How many tiles are in each one? One, two, three. You have three in each row. What multiplication do sentence does your array show? You had five rows of, is your multiplication word, three equals 15. Suppose Dave arranges the boxes in three equal rows. Draw a quick picture of your array. So we have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen. 14, 15. Here you have three rows. So how many are in each one? One, two, three, four, five. How many tiles are in each row? It's five tiles. What multiplication sentence does this array show? Is three times five equals 15. So two ways Dave can arrange the 15 boxes are blank rows of three, we have five rows of three, or three rows of five. Okay. Math talk. Why do five rows of three and three rows of five both equal the same number? Because it's the same amount of tiles in each one. You're just changing the direction using the commutative property of multiplication. So let's look at using this in some other similar problems. The commutative property of multiplication states that when you change the order of the factors, the product stays the same. You can think of it as the order property of multiplication. Okay, so let's look at these cute little birds here. I have two groups. Here's your of one, two, three, one, two, three. Always make sure three plus three is six. Okay, so now I have 
three groups of one, two, one, two, one, two, three groups of two, which is also six. So two times three equals three times two. It's the same thing. So the math idea is that facts that show the commutative property of multiplication have the same factors in different orders. So it's like a fact family. Look, you have two times three equals six. Using those same numbers, you're gonna have the same product, same answer, okay? Now on the bottom, it says explain how the models are like and how they are different. So thinking about how those things, the two models are alike and how they're different. They're alike because they have the same factors and the same product. They're different because they are in a different order, but it's okay because of the commutative property of multiplication or the order property of multiplication. Okay, I split my page so that I can make it fit, so you are still on page 120. You're gonna try this. Draw a quick picture on the right that shows the commutative property of multiplication, then complete the multiplication sentences. Okay, so this is groups of four, so I already did the counting part for you. You need to figure out how many groups here. This is hard stuff. Three times four, and you know that four plus four is eight, plus four is 12, so three times four is 12. So now they've already used the three that we just found, so now we need to make four groups of three. And we know that that is still going to equal 12. You're going to do part B, pause the video as you do it, and then compare it with mine. Okay, you counted, and there was five in each one of these rows, so you had two groups of five that equaled ten. Then, out of habit and what we did before, I drew five groups of two and still had ten. If you wanted to make it like the array, you should have had something similar like that, and if you were smarter than I was, you should have drawn it probably over here where it would have fit nicer on your page. Okay, we're going to continue. Seeming like an easy lesson again. Write a multiplication sentence for each of these ones that we have. So you have two arrays in number one. Looks like you have two rows of one, two, three, four, five, six. You know that six plus six is twelve, so you're done there. Here you have one, two, three, four, five, six, and there's one, two in each one. The commutative property, these are the same, so these are equal. Okay. Your math talk for that one, explain what the factor two means in each of the multiplication sentence. It means that you're going to do it twice. The two tells the number of rows, and then the two tells the number of each row. Okay, I'm going to go ahead and have you do number two, three, and four on your own. Pause the video and then check with mine. Okay, go ahead and take a minute and check your number two, three, and four. On number two, I started with your two groups of with your multiplication symbol, and there's four in each one. Then I just counted them and knew that two fours, four plus four equals eight. Switch it around for the commutative property of multiplication, and you have four times two equals eight. On number three, I began by counting my rows. So there were five rows of, with your multiplication symbol, three in each row. And then I went backwards and I counted by fives, so going five, 10, 15. And then the commutative property is three times five equals 15. Number four, I started with my rows. There are four rows. Each row has five. Again, counting by fives this time, switching it around because it's easier. 4 times 5 equals 20. Check your ones and make sure that you agree because on your own will be done at the end of the chapter. We're going to skip over to page 122 right now and do our problem solving page. Jenna used pine cones to make 18 peanut butter feeders. She hung the same number of feeders in each of six trees. Draw an array to show how many feeders she put in each tree. So she did six trees. One, two, three, four, five, six. 
and the same number to equal 18. So I'm going to keep counting until I get to 18. So I was at 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18. So I have six rows of 1, 2, 3, which we put in three trees. What if Jen hung the same number of feeders in each of nine trees? How many would she have? So now I'm going to do groups of nine. Three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. And I'm going to still count to 18. 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18. Now I have nine rows of two. That would be two feeders. Okay, your higher order thinking. There were some ducks in the pond. 28 ducks flew away. Seven more arrived at the pond. Now there are 43 ducks in the pond. How many ducks were there to begin with? Two step problem. So there were some ducks in the pond, 28 of them flew away. Seven more of them arrived. Now there are 43. How many ducks were there at the beginning? Go ahead and star that one. I want to make sure you can figure those out. Show your work in the workspace. Okay, moving on to number 17, write two different word problems about 12 birds to show 2 times 6 and 6 times 2 solve each problem. So you're going to use the factors of 2 and 6 and make me some multiplication story problems. Okay. And, and then do the test prep on the bottom, which is the example of the commutative property. That's what we just did on this. Be careful because number B has the number 1 in it. I'm going to give you a hint. That's not the answer right now. Okay. So which is the example of the commutative property of addition. So now what you need to do is to complete the on your own pages and numbers 16 and 17, 18 in your big math book on page 122. You're going to complete the on your own on page 121. Go back and answer your essential question of how you can use the commutative property of multiplication to find the products and make sure that you really can do your I can statement of using those. If you need help, we'll conference about it. Um, start those ones that you might want to talk about with me and make sure you understand the contents of the video before moving on.